Hey, what's going on guys? So, I was going to talk for a minute today about how to be, how do you decipher with all the information that's available through social media, YouTube, articles, all that stuff, how do you decipher what's good and what's not? And, uh, you know, what are some red flags, things to keep an eye out for? So, uh, what I do personally is when new information comes out, I look at some of the experts that I know have been in the field for a while and I see what they have to say on the topics and then I'll dive into a couple of books as far as, you know, what are these books saying about such and such a topic that is, is coming up. So case in point is right now the very popular thing is, uh, you know, knees over toes guy putting out some tremendous content, um, some good programs, and he's helping people alleviate a lot of knee pain. And that's great. Really good. I'm glad that people are following something like that to so they're not in pain, so they can live their lives. That's very important. But if we go back a little bit, we can look at some other folks who came before him, but they didn't uh, have it packaged as nicely. So we might go back to the work of Charles Poliquin. We might go back to uh, Peterson. We might go back to some more folks who talked about some of these same things he's talking about in his um, Zero program and look at, okay, well, these guys have been, they were doing this 30, 40 years ago or whatever. It's just now put together in a nice uh, package. So um, I would, I've, talked with guys where I've said, okay, look at what's in this program, then check it and see if it makes sense, see if it's come from someone before, and then if that person had success or not. So, we, you know, to shorten the whole thing up, stand on the shoulders of giants and look at what successes people have had and where that came from. So that's the first place. Uh, other really good resources are going to be pubmed.gov. So you can go there and start searching for anything you can possibly think of as far as uh, scientifically related. And, um, you know, just read the abstracts. Read the free abstract articles and then start to decipher some of the stuff that you read through the abstracts. So if you've got two completely opposing uh, ideologies or thoughts, well, read the results about what happened. And then from there... You actually have to tinker and try things for yourself to see, does this work for me or does it not? And if you're making those adjustments and tinkering around, you actually need to give yourself a legitimate amount of time to try what it is you're targeting. So if I'm trying to target strength, if I say, okay, I'm going to do three sets of five at 70%, well, that's great. But what if the next week I'm going to go, okay, well, I'm going to do three sets of five at 70%, but I'm going to do it on 30 seconds rest. Okay, well, now you introduce another variable. Okay, well, what if I try to do that uh, with chains or with bands or whatever else you can think of? Now you're starting to introduce more and more variables, and now it's getting kind of convoluted where we don't know for sure what's working and what's not. So as you make these adjustments and tinker around and try different things, make notes about what it is specifically that you're doing and how you're feeling following it. Not just that training day, but the following day, the following day, the following day. How's your sleep? How's your mood? How are, you know, if you're squatting, how are your knees feeling? How's your low back feeling? Things like that, as opposed to just shotgunning the whole thing and then saying, well, I think it worked, I'm not really sure. Like we don't have a high degree of certainty. So it really is gonna have to be a trial by fire situation where you just try stuff out. But before you start trying a ton of stuff, start with the big general success of the giants that came before you and look at commonalities that all of them are saying. So for example, when it comes to leg strength, Sets of five is going to be a great place to start. That doesn't mean that that's the forever and absolute place to be. Like, hey, you can't deviate from fives. But let's look at the works of like Bill Starr, Glenn Pinlay, Mark Ripito, Jim Winler. Like, what do those guys have in common? 
they all generally recommend like sets of five. So uh, those are some things to think about. Now, as far as red flags, things that make my ears perk up and I'm like, hmm, I really don't know about that, is whenever someone digs their heels in and is very, very absolute about what they believe. And they might have their reasons, that's fine, but <laughs> to just dig in and say, nope, it is absolutely and always forever this that tends to be problematic and those people tend to not know what the hell they're talking about. My buddy Andy Galpin has a great phrase whenever he's asked a question about physiology and performance and things like that. It depends, right? He needs to have that written down on a t-shirt somewhere and he could make a ton of money selling t-shirts because he says that in every situation and he's absolutely right. The answer he's going to provide depends on the context that you provide him with. And that's how it goes with each and every um, person as they're trying to figure out what's going to work best for them. It depends on, and this is not an all-inclusive list, but it depends on injury history, biological age, training age, range of motion limitations, health history. Like You, you get the idea. So there are, this is to say like, Okay, somebody says, everybody must barbell back squat. Really? Fucking everybody? You sure about that? So, I work with tactical folks on a, day -to -daily, on a daily basis. A ton of them have bad shoulders. Maybe they have a fractured wrist. Maybe they actually can't externally rotate their shoulders to be in a barbell back squat position. Maybe they need to use a safety squat bar. Or maybe they need to do a front foot elevated split squat. It really does depend on what their ability and training age and biological age are, where they're at in their career. So these are just some things to start, you know, kind of getting your wheels turning a little bit when you're looking at, um, you know, how do I know what to follow? So the big key takeaway, avoid absolutists. And number two, um, you're going to have to tinker and try things out for yourself and make notes along the way. Try all this stuff out, adjust a little bit, don't change more than one variable at a time, so you, and give yourself four to six weeks with that adjustment to see, is it working, is it not? Because one workout's just not enough time to uh, see if it is trending in the direction that you want to trend or not. So I hope that helps. If you guys have questions, email me, travis at dynamichp.net, or we can hop on a call anytime for free, 30-minute call, and that's done at dynamichp.net backslash call. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Have a good day.